That's how powerful that build is, he said. It brings things, persons or whatever, back to life. Baba Mahba means sacred peyote. It seems that peyote's been used for just hundreds and probably thousands of years in Mexico and Central America. And then it was used by some of the groups in the Southwest, what's now considered Texas. Juana Parker, while in, in Texas, was wounded in battle. An Indian woman in Texas treated him, and peyote was part of the treatment. And so he then brought it back, and eventually it made its way through the Southwest and up into the Southern and then the Northern Plains. It was pretty powerful. He used to use these medicine as it came down. Different tribes around there. Pretty soon the different tribes got these kind of powers. This peyote is bitter, you know, it's really hard to take. You have to sacrifice, and uh, when I was young, we used to only eat four. When I was about 10 years old, when you go to meetings, it's really hard to eat two of them. I had good teeth, you know, and we have to chew it. Though that juice is just tough, you know, you have to, boy, just when he gets here, just about choked to death, you know. But uh, my dad, they eat 100 of those, you know. They were against a lot of my people that uh, were against it because uh, uh, they say uh, they get hallucinated, they say it was a drug, and uh, at the time they didn't know it was a drug, but it did, it did something to them that they say it was dangerous, and uh, and the white people didn't like it, you know, they didn't like peyote, it was outlawed. The U.S. government in the 1880s really started to go after peyoteism all the way through hiring uh, special agents to, to, you know, go around on reservations and hunt out TP ceremonies and go into them and arrest people, putting people into jail and those kinds of things. And this has been uh, going on into the present. In fact, today, people still get very leery if people they don't know come to the ceremonies or are sort of hanging out in the vicinity or, or the area. When you're sitting at the POD meeting, it pertains to Mother Nature, all the wood, the fire, the coal, the water, the height, the gourd, the stick, for the green, the rattle. You eat that and you meditate to God. We create our own song. The songs come to you. <laughs> the water drum represents the home. There's a sound, a tone to it that makes you lively, in, in, in harmony with the peyote. When you eat a lot of peyote, your stomach don't agree with it, you get sick. But it helps you in that smoke in there too, it helps you out, you know. That's why we smoke in there too. We don't want to get too sick, but it's strong, you know. It's, we don't know how powerful it is. It cures people just like that too, you know. Well, the Native American church was established as a, quote, legal church in 1918 uh, when it was chartered. However, its roots go back certainly several decades before that. So it's been around since uh, at least the turn of the century. The halfway gifted, the almost gifted like this, put things into people. I want to let you know that. Don't watch that like me. We take stuff out of what they put in you, send them back. They don't like it. They don't want you around. They like to get their way in life of what they have. The impact that any kind of suppression has on the uh, practice of anybody's religion uh, naturally is that it denies a person a fundamental right. More importantly, I think it, it, it sends a signal that the uh, religion of the American Indian is not worth protecting, is not as important as Christianity. But even if someone were to debate that claim and, and, and put dates on different religions, that I don't believe is the most significant issue, longevity. Uh, personally speaking, I would think that the most significant issue with whatever religion is set forth is, does it line up with God's word? Like you go in there and uh, you go in a Catholic church, you use that little, 
give you communion, you give your spirit clean, and uh, you don't want to say a bad word, you don't want to cuss, you know, you want to be, you don't want to be sinful, you want to be nice and clean. The scripture would prohibit ingesting peyote in large quantities if it, as I understand, alters the mind, that it puts a person almost in a trance-like state or uh, causes them to hallucinate. Peyote is also for them the window into the spiritual realm. It's thought that only by, you know, ingesting the peyote that you see into the world of the spiritual and so forth. There's no word in their language for hallucination. They don't consider it a hallucination as such. They consider it a spiritual journey of the soul. In that tipi, when you're in the city, you're in your mother's womb, and you go out the next day, you sit up all night, facing east, the rising sun, you, you come about a new world, just like a newborn child. The 94 amendments to the American Indian Religious Freedom Act are very important, primarily because they do protect religious use of peyote. The act also establishes the fact that if any governmental agency feels it necessary to pass any kind of regulations around the use of peyote, for instance in the army or um, other kinds of sensitive areas, that uh, those people who need to promulgate those regulations have to consult with Native American spiritual leaders, peyoteists. So for the first time here, we're really seeing Congress recognizing the authority of Indian religious people. I don't think that what they do is right, but I, I would not say that the legislation in and of itself is wrong. Even we have white guys around New York running meetings over there. They're trying to stop them, but, but that's, that's the always how they use it. If they believe it, I don't know. You know, some of them, I got some white guys, they're good drummers, they're good thing. I go to church with them. You know, I want to jump for me, and they sit with it. Well, they're good singers, too. You know, by God, I tell them, they sing them good songs, our songs, in a good way. I would say, hey, use it wisely, huh? Use it wisely. Showed me a lot of things. Showed me a lot of things of what we're heading for, what the Indian is heading for. I see, I see. As you see them, they're really, they really got a job to do. How to survive in this country.